All right, let's dive into the part two of this video in which we are comparing the side pod philosophies of the AMR23 and the W14. In this video, I want to try and answer some of the fundamental questions that have been floating around on the internet. Namely, the first one being, how do these two philosophies treat the front wheel wake? And which of this philosophy is more successful in delivering high energy air to the rear end of the car? And hold on, how do these aggressive water slides remain attached? Well, we will try and uncover the answers to these questions in this video by looking at the Y and Z slices of the CFD model that we've developed. Again, before getting into this, let's just say that this CFD model is far from perfect, right? And the intention of this video is to discuss potential aero philosophies or aero mechanisms that might be at play and not really tell you that this is how things work because I really can't do that because my model is not accurate enough and let's just appreciate that. But before you get into this video, make sure you watch part one because I think it lays a nice foundation to what we are going to discuss in this video and the link to the part one should pop up on top of your screen now. So now let us look at the W14 versus the AMR23 for zero yaw, a Z300 slice, the CP distribution on the left hand side and the velocity distribution on the right hand side. And there are a couple of things that really come to my mind when I see this. Looking at the front wheel wake itself, you can see that the winglet actually lands up treating the front wheel wake quite well. You can see that the inside part of the front wheel wake lands up being pushed out and the wake itself is closed quite effectively quite early on. Compared to that of the AMR23, you can see that the wake is not really closed but is still being deflected outward. Now here's the cool part which I think is not very well known on the internet and I think including me have missed it until I've seen the CFD. I think what's happening here is a little bit different from what we initially thought. Now all the speculation on the internet or all the theories on the internet until now is that the winglet and the side pod shapes land up pushing out this wake um, away from the tire side pod itself. Now what you can see here is that the wake is closed quite early on and does not really require the side pod to manage the wake itself because you know the wake is closed. But What's happening with the AMR23 is very interesting. Uh, you have the inside part of the wake that's being closed due to the pressurization of the undercut. And then as the air flows around the undercut and around the front part of the side pod, because of the drop in pressure, and you can see that here quite evidently, and the drop in pressure almost to 60 to 70 percent on the side of the side pod as compared to the W14 which has a slight drop in pressure uh, not really a lot what you land up doing is you land up creating this inwash you land up dragging the free stream air all the way from out towards the rear half of the car and that lands up closing the wake so let me just repeat that the inside part of the wake you're treating through pressurization of the undercut that is this part that's the inside part of the wake and the outside part of the wake that is you're closing the front tire wake by dragging free stream air from outside due to the pressure drop on the side pods now that is awesome and i don't know why i did not think about this mechanism because this mechanism used to exist on the previous generations of cars where something similar used to also happen and they used to close the wake by using a combination of the pressurization on the inboard side and dragging the air from free stream and then using that to close the wake. Now the cool part is that once you've done that, you land up mixing high energy air and you drag all that high energy air to the rear half of the car and you can see all of that is going to the rear half of the car. Now there's a slight disadvantage to this approach as well which you can see from the pressurization of the rear tires, right? So this approach fundamentally creates a bit of a draggy car because all that high energy air is now feeding to the rear part of the car, which is good um, overall, but also it will end up creating a large high pressure region on the front face of the rear tire, which will create a lot of at least rear tire drag. Um, and might be one of the reasons why the AMR23 is a bit of a draggy car compared to its closest competitors. Now another cool part that I want to talk about is the side pod shape itself. Now the box shape lands up creating 
a sharp leading edge um, and i don't think this separation exists on the real car i mean it's mercedes they would make sure that you don't have a leading edge separation on the you know on the side pod box intake itself but however what i do think is that it is susceptible to separation in transient conditions as compared to the side pod shape of the aston martin and also keep in mind that there is more overall curvature on the side pod so so as the air has to navigate to the rear it is seeing a higher adverse pressure gradient compared to that of the aston martin which is quite flat as you can see this this section is quite flat in its own right and that would mean that the adverse pressure gradient that the airflow has to navigate to the rear end of the car is smaller which is what i think is causing the consistent drop in static pressure across the entire side pod wall itself and causing the free steam flow to attach in as i mentioned previously but again what i'm trying to say is that the side pod shape itself is going to create a less of an adverse pressure gradient which inherently would land up supporting flow attachment around the side pods the third key takeaway point from this slice is that notice the high energy air that is being delivered to the side wall of the rear tire look at that compared to that of the uh, w14 and look at the drop in static pressure across the inner face of the rear tire now these two effects would have big consequences on all the elements that are around the rear tire such as the rear tire brake ducts the suspension fairings which would power up all the vortex structures which are responsible for improved diffuser expansion and are also responsible for supporting the diffuser to work harder and also responsible for rear tire squirt management which is big because there's a huge chunk of performance to be found by improving this area and there's always extreme amount of importance laid down on this area because in these generation of cars the diffusers are extremely important and the better rear tire squirt management that you have the higher delivery of energy flow that you can give to this area the vortex strength and the health of the vortex in the diffuser all these factors are responsible for driving the diffuser harder and extracting more out of the diffuser itself now what i've tried to do is i've tried to draw two vectors uh, this one and this one here and you can see that already for different side pods and for the same diffuser the amr 23 is already expanding the diffuser harder so you know there are obvious hints that this is working obviously the f1 car is an ecosystem of airflow so this might not be true uh, but i'm just trying to isolate the effect of the side pod and telling you guys that the diffuser is working harder in this case now there's something else you guys might notice and say shub i see a huge chunk of high energy air here that is flowing towards the beam wing through the suspension fairings and the aston martin looks kind of a sucky here you know it's not doing really great now why are you not pointing that out why are you not pointing good things about the w14 out i hear you and i see that myself but i think that is a simulation thing in our case because we've not been able to keep our water slides fully attached and what you see here is a small separation in the water slides themselves which is causing the low energy air delivery to the beam wing the suspensions which i think is not happening on the real car by the way i think this area that is the area through the water slides is also red good energy to the rear so yeah those are the observations from this particular slice from my end so i was really excited about this slice um that is this is the y slice at 490 uh with the cp distribution on the left and the velocity distribution on the right for the w14 and the amr23 and i was really excited about this slice but also land up getting a bit disappointed because i'm not seeing the kind of effects which i expected to see this is primarily because we started modeling this water slides before we saw some of the images that came out to the surface on the internet a bit later which gives you a slightly different perspective of how the water slide actually is but there are still some things you can learn and let me try and point those out the first thing i noticed was the downwash that the mid wing itself generates so you can see that the you know the mid wing is yes it's doing its work it's creating that downwash and trying to feed that air to the rear part of the car and this separation that you see here is not really real because the modeling across that is not really modeled well in this but you can see that the winglet is being effective in creating the downwash and delivering air to the rear half of the car 
Now again, we've not been able to keep the water slides fully attached and I will talk about that a bit more. Uh, but you know, uh, you can already see that the water slides are also doing the same thing. They're dragging air and then they're delivering air specifically to the rear part of the car. Now, because of the way we've modeled this, I don't really think that this separation exists. And I do believe that a team of Aston Martin Scalibur and their aerodynamicists would not leave a separated airflow in water slides. Now, let us try and talk about the potential mechanisms which would help keeping the flow attached in the water slide itself because the water slides are quite deep themselves and I'm pretty sure that they would need a supporting mechanism for them to remain attached throughout the entire length of the water slide. So what do I think are some of the potential mechanisms? Let me dive real quickly onto the ISO plot, right? So you can see that they have a couple of winglets here on the halo itself. So that would create a bit of downwash. You have a couple of vortex generators on the mirror housing. So again, that would create a little bit of downwash. Now again, do you remember I was talking about the undercut dividing the airflow into two areas, the lower bit across the G line and one across the upper side wall. And this airflow that would spill across the side wall of the side pod would again land up generating downwash onto the water slide. And all these small vortex structures are creating downwash, which would help support the attachment of the flow in the water slide itself so that it delivers high energy air and off you go through the water slides, delivering high energy air through the rear suspensions about the diffuser going to the beam wing and resulting in more vertical expansion of the flow. As I discussed in some of my previous videos, do check them out if you still do not understand how vertical expansion or just diffuser expansion works in general. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it and maybe you can tell me in the comments what are some of the potential error mechanisms that you think are going on and maybe possibly that I have missed. And please be kind with this because again everything is not perfect but as engineers we can try to speculate. A big shout out to Wanja for all the amazing work that he's doing. He was extremely busy, but he was able to fit this into his schedule. So I am really grateful to him for doing this. So if you've enjoyed this video, give me a like. And if you love the aero analysis, the race weekend studies that we do, give me a subscribe. I'm looking forward to building this community of engineers and aerodynamicists so that we can all learn about F1 cars and make the sport more aware about the kind of technology that is involved in it when it comes to aerodynamics. So help me in this conquest of building this community together and see you in the next video. Have a good one. <laughs>